Hey guys, it's Joel from guntoter.org. Welcome back. Um, today I'd like to take a little time to talk about some bolt-on rail options for the Ruger PC carbine. Um, I really love the Ruger PC carbine. It's just, a, it's a fun gun to shoot. Uh, you know, pistol caliber carbines have obviously been making quite the comeback in the last few years. Um, the PC carbine is not Ruger's first, you know, kind of foray into pistol caliber carbine market. They had uh, the PC-9 and the PC-40 years ago, and this is really just kind of a modern iteration of the lessons they learned back from those models. Um, I would not classify this as a primary fighting weapon. Uh, however, it is a specialized weapon that has a number of different uses. Uh, everything from training people, um, you know, marksmanship practice a little bit less expensive than shooting 5.56 and so on uh, survival um, and then other specialty things where maybe you need the takedown capability or you need the uh, the magazine compatibility with your pistols so it's got a number of different uses uh, the problem one of the problems is if you get the straight base model which is what i have here uh, there's really nowhere to mount uh, any sort of defensive um, accessories like a flashlight. Uh, this little you know, kind of tiny bit of molded Picatinny rail here uh, just doesn't cut it. Uh, I've tried mounting a flashlight directly on there, everything from a pistol light to say a Surefire style light, and it just really does not work. Um, the good news is there are a number of aftermarket full rail systems that you can get and they're not that hard to install uh, ruger also um, offers a model that comes with the rail installed and honestly if you're out there debating on a pc carbine right now i would say for capability's sake i would get the one with the rail already installed however if you for whatever reason you like this style or maybe you already have one and you don't feel like you're up to the task of putting the entire rail on there are a couple of bolt-on options that attach this picatinny rail and give you the the ability to use mlock accessories and we're going to talk about those um, the two main ones that i found uh, there's one from catalyst arms and there's one from midwest industries Midwest Industries obviously being a name a lot of people recognize. Uh, Catalyst Arms, I didn't recognize until I started looking around, uh, but they're actually the one that Ruger sells on their website as their you know kind of official accessory for the, the PC carving. Um, so we'll go through each of those, we'll go through the positives, we'll go through the negatives, and hopefully at the end of this video, you'll be able to make an intelligent decision on which of those two options will work for you. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so first up is our option from Catalyst Arms. And uh, there's a couple things I really like about this. Um, first off, it's it fits in really well with the aesthetic of the foreign. So if you like this style, you don't like the big bulky rail, uh, this option really kind of just blends in almost seamlessly. In fact, if you look at it from the top, you can barely even tell it's there. Um, it's super lightweight. Uh, according to my postal scale, it's less than two ounces. Uh, so it's not going to add a lot of bulk to the gun. Uh, it gives you three uh, mounting slots. It gives you one on each side, and then it actually gives you one on the bottom. Uh, so you know, so if you want to mount your like a pistol light, for example, like a TLR or a X300, and you want to mount it down below, that's an option for you. Uh, the other thing I really like about it is it actually comes with a QD socket, and uh, it is reversible. I have this set up uh, for the right hand. Um, but it's just it's basically the opposite end of the mounting bolt so you can flop it uh, for a lefty no big deal um, but the fact that they actually included that is nice because honestly you know if you're using this in any sort of defensive scenario you're not going to be using kind of a traditional two point to these little you know sling swivel things this is not going to happen that's probably one of the bigger things i'm annoyed with ruger that they even included those on this gun um, so this kind of remedies that issue. Uh, the downsides is you really only do have, you know, those three slots. So you're, you are a little limited in where you can mount uh, your accessories. So like, for example, I used a, uh, just a Picatinny rail that I put in here and then threw a TLR one on it. Uh, and 
I have big hands, it's not a big deal. Uh, I could reach the controls quite easily. Uh, if you have smaller hands, um, this thing, the socket could get in your way a little bit uh, as you're trying to reach controls. You may have to you know, mount it on the opposite side. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be a big issue, but it's just something to think about. Uh, as I talked about when I was talking about setting up uh, sling systems on my AR, I really don't like having the sling mount ahead of my hand when I grip because I don't like having to either come underneath the sling or come on top of the sling to grip the gun. Um, you know, but it kind of is what it is. If I'm not willing to put a full fore end on, I have to accept my options that are available otherwise. Uh, I do think that this is a very solid option. Uh, it's well made, it's got a nice tight lockup. Like I said, it blends in really well with the, you know, the overall theme of the gun. It doesn't make it scream tactical, kind of like the full rail does. Um, so if that's a concern, you know, if you're using this, say as a, a patrol carbine or something, maybe your boss is a little hesitant about the idea, you know, you might be able to sell him on this more than you could sell him on a tactical rail. Um, so anyway, so that's the Catalyst Arms. A um, couple really solid uh, points in favor of it, and uh, I, I think it's a solid option. Okay, so moving on to the Midwest Industries option. Um, as you can see, Midwest Industries took a very different tact with theirs. Um, it's a lot larger than the uh, Catalyst Arms. However, uh, with that size comes a little bit more capability for you. Uh, instead of a single slot on either side, there's two and a half. So there are a lot more options as far as where you know you can mount your accessories on here. And even though it looks significantly larger, uh, it doesn't really add that much weight. Uh, Midwest Industries advertises this at three ounces. According to my postal scale upstairs, it's actually less than that. It's about 2.6. So even though it offers you a lot more mounting options, it doesn't really add a lot of weight. Um, it does add a little bit of bulk, obviously, because it wraps around the side of the handguards. Um, but the handguards are so small to start with that I really don't think the little bit of bulk that this adds is gonna cause major issues with your grip. So that's the positives. A lot more options on where you can mount things. Okay, so the negatives. There is no option to mount anything down below. Uh, it's just the way it's designed. If you're gonna mount anything on here, you're gonna mount it on the sides. Uh, it also does not have uh, the sling socket, which as I said, that's kind of one of the things I really like about the Catalyst Arms. Um, now, practically what that means is if you're going to use a sling, it's a good thing you have two and a half slots because you're gonna lose some of that to the QD socket. Um, if you're not gonna run a sling, it's not that big of a deal. Um, it just means you have a lot more mounting options, but if you are gonna run a sling, keep in mind, you're gonna lose some of that real estate to actually mounting the socket. And when you're sitting there thinking about where am I gonna put my flashlight, you're gonna to have to factor that in. Um, the other thing is, on this particular one that I have, and it may not be on all uh, of their uh, models that you get, but there's a slight, slight bit of wobble, you know, up and down not back and forth you know it's not a huge amount of wobble but it's just enough to kind of mess with your OCD um, now in practical purposes that going to be a big deal not really because honestly if you're just putting a flashlight on here or something like that it's not going to affect the usefulness of the flashlight now if you're putting a laser on here you know and you're trying to take this thing out a little bit further and you know you're worried about laser losing zero or whatever I, I mean i guess that could be an issue but let's be honest at the distances that this gun is really practical um even a little bit of wobble with the laser is not going to be a big deal you know if you're trying to take this thing out to 200 yards and fine you know a little wobble wobble might affect the laser but a nine millimeter is going to be a much bigger issue than the wobble in the laser mount so <clears throat> It's a solid option, uh, you know, it's just a different tact. Okay, so I hope that that overview of both of those options was useful for you. Um, you know, the purpose of it was not necessarily to sit there and say, oh, this one's so much better than this one. It was basically to talk about the pros and cons and give you the information so that you can go out and make an informed decision when you're trying to pick. Um, both of them, like I said, the weight's not that much different. One's around two ounces, one's around three ounces. 
The cost is about the same. Uh, they're both about $55 uh, uh, MSRP. So, you know, those factors are probably not going to be major issues for you. you know, it's really going to come down to your use. You know, do you want more of the M-Lock slots? Do you like the, the QD already attached? Do you want the slim line? Do you mind the bulk? Um, you know, it's, it's, it's your purpose, you know, drives your choice of gear. And I just wanted to help inform that. Um, you know, they're both, if you're starting out with this gun and you know, you're know trying to consider setting it up for defensive use, they're both significantly cheaper than adding a full rail. Most of the full rails, you know, if even if you're comfortable with the idea of messing with the fore end and whatever, most of the full rails start at about 150, these start at 55. So it's a great way to kind of get your feet wet, play around with a little bit, see if you like it before, you know, moving on to deciding if you want the full rail and chassis and all the other fun stuff that goes with it. So hope it was useful for you. Um, if it was, please hit like, please hit subscribe, notifications, you know, give us a share, all that fun stuff. Um, if you like what we're doing here, we do have a Patreon page. Uh, you can support us monetarily. Um, if you can't support us monetarily, I do appreciate uh, shares and just telling your friends about what we're doing here. So Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys next time and have a great one.